my name is Fraser Simons. This is my channel, Springboard Thought. Today I'm going to be doing the hashtag uh, Read Banned Books 2022 tag. I believe is what it's called. Um, I have with me my laptop because there's quite a bit of books that are challenged, um, some of which were removed as well, that I wanted to talk about and kind of explain. And then I'll talk about two books that I have actually read from this list. A lot of them I've heard of and a bunch I haven't actually consumed myself, so we'll see. But freedomtoread.ca is a great place if you're in Canada. It has a pretty comprehensive list. It lists why it was challenged and the outcome of it generally um, without kind of, with being pretty objective and impartial, I would say, which is a plus. So I kind of took a smorgasbord <laughs> because there's 17 pages of these books. Um, and just picked out kind of like a good smattering that covered a bunch of different challenge reasons, some of which I think can be even valid. Um, and then, yeah, maybe it elucidates it a little bit. So one of them is The Three Musketeers, a 2015 challenge for age inappropriate and sexually explicit. So that sounds to me like they just wanted it shelved in a little bit older of a section and then somebody would generally take a look at it and change it or not. Then the next is The Wars, which is probably the most famous other than The Handmaid's Tale. This is one I've heard about the most in Canada. Um, it's by Timothy Finley um, and it has a lot of challenges. Most predominantly though, the first one seems to be 1991 in uh, Lambton County, Ontario. High school student asked that the novel be removed from the English curriculum because um, it has graphic depictions of um, male, male uh, rape for um, within the unit of a World War I serving um, platoon or unit, which was at the time very <laughs> controversial to put in it because it was published in 1977 and it was challenged even in 1991 and then again in 2011. It was kept, but it went to a committee afterwards because the um, normal body couldn't make it a decision basically and yeah both times it was specifically the homosexual um, gang rape depiction. To, to Kill a Mockingbird which I've actually read and I'll talk about later. It was challenged by um, interestingly at the 1991 an Afro-Canadian organization called Prude Pride of Race, Unity, and Dignity Through Education in St. John, New Brunswick, sought to remove the book, um, and Huckleberry Finn just for the um, dislike of the portrayal specifically around racial minorities in both um, books. So it would be specifically around like the dignity um, aspect and pride, I think. It doesn't say um, what happened which means it probably went nowhere. This one's pretty interesting as well and kind of telling. Women on Top, How Real Life Has Changed Women's Sexual Fantasies, publication date 1991. And listen to this. This is, so I think a lot of people think Canada doesn't have stuff like this happen. And it is like a very kind, accepting, tolerant place, but it has just as much of a seedy underbelly as uh, America, especially when it comes to this kind of stuff, like conservatism has always been here. People have always been <laughs> trying to ban and burn and whatnot books. But this is, so in 1997, Winnipeg police entered libraries in the city and threatened to lay charges if this book were not withdrawn immediately from library shelves. The police were acting on advice from the Crown Attorney's Office, which was responding to an anonymous call to a radio phone-in show. The police also said they would prosecute anyone caught distributing the book, including bookstores. At the same time, the RCMP officers in BC raided three libraries looking for copies of the book, but without success. Um, the objection, the book, which was based on interviews with women who described their sexual fantasies in detail, was said to be pornographic, although the book has been published in 1991. No charges has ever been brought against it. And a week later, the Crown withdrew saying that um, a likely charge would not be um, forthcoming. They didn't think they could prove it, which, surprise. 
So, and that's wild, they actually raided libraries. <laughs> then there's another one, Gay Ideas by Richard Moore. There's not much listed about this, but in 1992, this controversial American book contains photographs of Robert um, Maplethorpe, and they decided to not distribute or promote the book. So it's it, interestingly that it interests it as like a, a challenge when it's more like almost censorship, right? Like they decided not to distribute it. Would they have um, distributed the entire list of his works save for that? Um, one salesperson resigned in protest. Go Ask Alice, I'm intimately familiar with. They made us read it in junior high. It scared the bejesus out of me. We were also given the party line that it was a real diary by somebody our age where this stuff happened. Of course, that was misleading, um, untrue. And it, I think, rightfully really angered <laughs> myself and the other students when we found out that we had been misled by Christian propaganda and that the school board had kind of stoked the controversy with this. In 1978, school boards in Richmond and Langley, BC removed the book from their high schools in Richmond. Students sent a petition to the school board to protest the ban, and the Richmond Teacher Librarians Association supported them. In Langley, a committee of school trustees, librarians, and parents uh, recommended keeping copies in counselor's office, but these efforts failed. Both bans stayed in effect. Um, to that, I kind of say good. <laughs> It's misleading, disingenuous, uh, and it's, yeah, it's, it's no good, it's shit. Um, I believe this is on the Garb August thing that is coming up, uh, and I would say it is proper garbage. So if you want to see what propaganda is like, just check it out. It is vivid. I remember it very well still, and it's, you know, two decades later. Then this one's pretty interesting as well. Somebody objected to uh, McLean's, which is a predominant uh, news magazine here. In October to 23rd, 2006, McLean's Magazine excerpt Mark Stain's, uh, yeah, Stain's bestseller book, America Alone. Um, the book considered the impact of Muslim immigrants to the Western democracies in 2007. The Canadian Islamic Congress, CIC, filed complaints with three Canadian human rights bodies. The CIC said Stain's Flagrantly Islamophobic writing exposed Muslims to hatred and contempt. Um, it was sent to a commission who dismissed the complaint from the BC Human Rights Tribunal. Head held in a hearing in 2008, the tribunal cleared McLean of any wrongdoing. It's Madonna's sex. I don't know if people remember that, but uh, I think this is still kind of like risque and a collectible item for people as well. Uh, it was objected to in 91-92 in Thunder Bay, Ontario, Cambridge, Ontario, Halifax, Nova Scotia, and many other Canadian communities. A chorus of objection greeted news that the libraries had purchased copies for patrons. One library recorded more than 100 requests for the book. After a noisy public meeting of Thunder Bay's library board, officials decided to keep the book in the system for borrowers over the age of 18, which seems reasonable. I imagine... Um, younger people were requesting it a lot. Snow Falling on Cedars is one of the books I'll be talking about um, after this little section. Um, and it was objected to in 2006 for an anonymous letter from Dufferin Priel, Ontario Catholic District School Board. And the objection is just sexual content. In 2007, there was a review which got sent to a committee, which got sent to another committee and then the review decided to keep it in grade 11 English course, as well as send out letters explaining why it is an important book. The Giver, I think that's a pretty famous Canadian objective one, uh, objection citation thing, it's something everybody knows, I think. Uh, Challenges in Canada, 1998, a parent in uh, Simcoe County, Ontario, complained of the presence of this book and Robert Comier's novel, we all fall down in two elementary school libraries. The parents said that the teaching this book would be more appropriate at the grade 11 level. It looks like they kept it um, from grade six, seven, eight. I actually haven't read The Giver, so I can't comment on that. The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman, 1995, 2007. It was objected to because it had atheist themes. 
and it was objected at Hamilton Catholic District Service, um, and nothing was reported about it, so I guess it went nowhere. Most famous, I think, like I mentioned, Henwood's Tale, 1985, uh, lots uh, throughout the years <laughs> it's been objected to. I think not a lot of people actually know that everything present in The Handmaid's Tale from the time of writing in 85 had actually already happened to women, um, globally, albeit, but she specifically um, gave a talk about how she didn't want to use any information in the book that deviated from what had already happened historically to women somewhere on the planet. And so that if anyone said that it was like dystopian and it could never happen, she could say it already happened and she actually, I think, carried around news clippings and stuff like that. Then uh, another famous one, Harry Potter, was objected to. In 2000, a religious parent in Corner Book, Newfoundland, complained about the presence of these popular books because it has themes around the depiction of wizardry and magic and, um, wow, the school principal ordered the book's removal, so it was removed. The parent and the principal had not bothered to read the novels at all. The Indian Cupboard, you can probably guess why it was uh, challenged. Cameras BC school board removed this title temporarily from its libraries. Potential uh, offensive treatments of native peoples is the objection. The books were replaced, but the title is included on a roster of challenge materials for teacher information going forward. And that was in 1992. The Incest Diary, which I hadn't heard of. It came out in 2017, published by Anonymous. Um, and this is a diary of how um, her father had sexually assaulted her from a very young age. And people, it's a pretty wild story. 2017, August 31st, a patron of the Public Library in British Columbia demanded the removal of this memoir for adult readers. The patron claimed to speak on behalf of all victims of incest, pedophilia, uh, child sex trafficking, Indian residential schools, church sex abuse, and on behalf of one billion rising, a campaign to end rape and sexual violence against women. The patron said the book only helps people who sexually exploit children to press for the normalization and acceptance of incest. During this challenge, it appears she stole the book, wouldn't give it back uh, during the committee through 2017, trying to make a determination about it. And she said that people should be carrying books such as Maya Angelou or Eve Ensler on the matter instead. Um, Angelou and Ensler have had some of their works banned in other places, it makes a note. In the end, the library kept the incest diary in the collection. So there's a few of them, but there's 17 pages total. Um, so I encourage you to go take a look at that, especially if you're Canadian. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about the ones that I had read. To Kill a Mockingbird is probably one that everyone has read. I only read it last year. Uh, the prose work, by the way, is maybe some of the most gorgeous prose work I've ever read in my entire life. It's incredible. As to if it is um, objectionable for how it portrays black people specifically, there wasn't too much of it from Scout's perspective, the uh, little girl. So I'm not sure uh, specifically. It's probably it, someone else would ha be having that intelligent conversation as to whether they thought it would be or not and not really um, qualified to say so, but I know that it raised awareness and has done a lot and means a lot to a lot of people. And I remember thinking that it felt less um, incendiary than I imagined based on how many um, challenges and general intellect stuff about this book that has been going around. So, but again, I'm not really one to speak on the issue. I read, and I will link below, my review of Snow Falling on Cedars. I think this is a really fantastic book. I think it is a little bit antiquated in how it specifically characterizes the Japanese family because of the overall framing, I think. Um, it generally does fall into somewhat stereotypical notions of a Japanese family. Uh, it always hits on honor and duty and um, responsibility without kind of zooming out of those things and kind of enriching the perspective um, of all of the characters beyond it. 
their lives seem to revolve around those things, which is a stereotype, definitely. Um, but every other aspect of the book I think is phenomenal. The trial case itself um, does a very good job of edu educating the reader on um, racism, on what happens in the war, PTSD stuff, as well as discrimination, uh, racism, and systemic issues that uh, people had to deal with. It, I, I thought it was a fantastic book. Another book actually was Standout Prose, and I got a lot out of uh, this book, especially. It was a favorite book or movie of mine when I was growing up as well, and so as a teenager I can say that it specifically was something that made me think about um, racism towards uh, Asian people in general and Japanese people specifically, and you know, it's even more pertinent now with the Stop Asian Hate stuff going around uh, and that ballooning after the virus went around and how it was characterized and portrayed in the news and how everybody talked about it. So, yeah, I think people should be reading more banned books. I think I should be reading more banned books uh, based on the amount that I have actually read from the challenge list. I know I'll probably never read The Wars because I don't like war or military fiction in general, and I'm not sure I could handle that specific kind of scene. Possibly from an audiobook um, where I'm a little bit removed, I could be able to handle it, but... And I have not read The Handmaid's Tale and own it, so that'll probably be my next uh, reading of a banned book. And maybe I'll hashtag that review with this so people can find it. Otherwise, I will uh, let you go now. Hopefully this hasn't been a very long video. I'm not gonna tag people because the tag has been around for a month. I think everyone who has wanted to do it has done it. And if you haven't seen it by chance and you're seeing this video, I hope that I will tempt you in order to do it and talk about your own experiences with banned books, what you think, what you feel, and um, any thoughts, put them in the comments below and I'll see you next video. Bye.